Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to be doing a Microsoft Ignite Azure Data Scientist Challenge. Um, for those of you who don't know what Microsoft Ignite is, it is just an event in which Microsoft uh, shows off a whole bunch of new products, new techniques, um, and really it's made for developers, products for developers, so things like Azure. And I know I use Azure pretty heavily in my channel, and um, I swear, I have no affiliation with Microsoft. I just uh, really enjoy using Azure over AWS. I find it more friendly to me personally, but if you look online, you know, a lot of people do prefer AWS, and there's always those debates of which ones are best. In any case, uh, Microsoft Ignite has uh, a learning zone in which they have a whole bunch of cloud skills challenges. They walk you through um, a bunch of different pathways to teach you about certain skills. This year, I have to say, it feels like they've toned it down a little bit. Um, so I don't, I don't remember exactly last year, but I feel like there were more challenges and less on kind of the admin side and more kind of cool techie projects. I might be wrong, but the one thing I am certain of is uh, if you complete one of these challenges, you can earn uh, an Azure or Microsoft e exam, uh, some sort of certification. And this year their, their offering is, I'm, I'm certain that it is shorter and less impressive. But uh, I never bothered getting the certification anyways. It seems like kind of a waste of time. But um, these challenges were uh, fun last year. Uh, they do take a while, so I'm just going to go through it. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, but I find either the data scientist or the data analyst um, looks like the most interesting ones. Uh, although I suppose identity and information protection might be relevant to me. Let's take a look. Well, oh, that's not very scripted. All right, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go with the one that jumped out at me. Data scientist, join the challenge. Oh, let me just... This and sign in. Okay, and you know what? I might as well sign up for this one too. There's no, there's no penalty for not finishing it or anything like that. But let's see, Active Directory, Multifactor. Yeah, these kind of look more like administrative things. So it's not so impressive. Here it looks like you're building something, and. Boy, there's a lot of material here, so I don't know. Uh, I might just skip through this video um, or do certain challenges, but look, 20 hours, 19 hours. This one's 21 hours. So, I mean, even if I am super fast and do this in like half the time, that's still 10 hours. So uh, this might be a cut and paste sort of video. So let's just get started. What's really cool is they start with some videos, some written text, and they do get hands-on. They tell you what to build. Um, they sometimes hook you up with some Azure credits, um, or at least tell you how to use the free uh, tiers to do things. So just scrolling through here. Yeah, I think I chose the right one, but let's take a look. This was data scientist. Let's look at data analyst. And Power BI. Yeah, see, that's not as interesting to me. Power BI is uh, business intelligence, and it's a lot of pseudo coding, I find, and I don't think that's as interesting. This one's only 18 hours, so if I wanted to save some time. Um, what I really wanted to look at was machine learning. Uh, I did the deep learning deep learning.ai course courses from Andrew Ng. Oh, they have a much nicer page now. But uh, Andrew Ng is 
one of the, I, I guess, the geniuses leading uh, AI. Um, and there he is right there. And he does he did these free courses on Coursera and now they're on deeplearning.ai to teach you about deep learning. And it was really tough. Um, one of the real challenges is he goes through all of the math. And today, what I want to learn is Azure has a machine learning studio. It's all visual. You kind of skip all the math. I know that's not great, but you know, uh, that seems very appealing to me when my math wasn't quite up to scratch. So if you don't have like a decent understanding of calculus, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a great place to be. Okay, so I'm gonna close these off. That's not useful to me and we'll start here. I'm just gonna shut off the video and start working. Okay, so we're finally at the meat of things. Um, you probably saw me skip along the way, like these uh, first ones, they're really quite basic. It's like, how do you put in a line of best fit? How do you do like a really basic regression? Um, we're finally onto neural networks, TensorFlow, PyTorch. So um, I may finally actually clone one of these um, to run. So uh, yeah. Uh, Time is running fast, pretty fast, so uh, if you do one of these, uh, maybe you can skip through a whole bunch of them as well. Okay, um, I thought I'd just stop this really quickly and go through uh, what we've seen so far. You'll notice that I'm skipping along the way and it's really because I'm, I'm doing this to learn and I've done these exercises uh, in one way or another elsewhere, not with PyTorch. So let's, let's open up TensorFlow. Uh, first of all, we created a machine learning workspace. Um, and that is really quite nice. Um, you can see that uh, Microsoft Azure has really done a lot of work to make this really streamlined. What I wanted to see, and I think we will see later, are all the tools to like visually train uh, machine learning rather than go through like all of this code. Um, the thing we've done is we've actually put Jupyter um, up on Azure, so we're running off Azure. And that's really quite nice as well. I love Jupyter as an idea, but you know, all the stuff I got installed on my computer, I try and keep off. So uh, to have it just run online is really quite nice. Uh, Jupyter, if you can't see, is um, mixing code and text together, something like this, and you can actually run it. So if I just go here and run, it will run and output this uh, chart. And then we keep running and we run and we run. And eventually, you know, you, you work through the, the uh, workbook. So it's a really great learning tool. And I think I've seen like a lot of these machine learning courses take advantage of it. I don't know why this in particular, because I like the notebooks would work, I think, for a lot of other um, a lot of other areas as well. Ooh, maybe we should stop that. 
let's not do that. Um, now, let's just go through what we've learned so far. Data exploration, regression, classification, clustering are all not really machine learning concepts. These are basic statistical analysis. Um, regression is like your grade five or six math. You have a bunch of points on a graph and then you draw like a line of best fit. You're trying to fit a line through as many points or close to as many points as possible. Classification is uh, sorting things. Yes and no, white and black, um, you know, round or square type of things. And clustering is when you have a chart and there's obviously a group uh, centered around this cluster and this cluster and this cluster. Um, and you use math to try and figure out what is best. So uh, I think the question I stumbled on was K means, and basically you pick random points, see how many uh, other points are close to it, and adjust your selections and, and slowly walk through it that way. Um, where it starts getting interesting is deep neural networks, convolutional neural networks, and transfer learning. Um, you know, you should definitely try these exercises yourself, but, um, and I, I don't know how helpful I find these because, um, again, I, I want to just plug deep learning AI. These courses were fantastic. Um, you have to think about it. You have to fill in the blanks. You have to do the math. So, uh, be prepared to really, really work for it. And if you don't have, you know, a decent enough background in math, um, you're going to have some trouble with it. But, um, you know, it's much more helpful than this one where you're just running it through. So if you're like me and you want to like cheat your way through and just answer the questions at the end, um, you can, you don't need to know what this says, what the syntax is, all of that, because they've done it perfectly for you. You're not filling anything out. Um, anyways, deep learning. Um, first of all, machine learning. The one thing I've learned about it is, well, the two things I really want to convey about how we've done it in the old ways is, number one, half of the battle is cleaning up your data. Um, what I mean by that is how you format your data is super important. Very rarely do you have a nice data set like this one where they tell you the length, the depth, uh, the mass, the species, like all laid out for you. Usually in deep learning, you'll have some MP3 files, some MIDI files, some WAV files, and you got to make sure they all fit one standard so that, you know, your numbers don't fly all over the place. Uh, let me think. An example is if you're trying to recognize numbers, um, you know, handwritten numbers, one, two, three, four, uh, there is this very famous data set that looks like this. Everything is, uh, I think, uh, white text on black back black background. If you give an AI suddenly a color image where this is gray or blue or red, um, it will completely confuse your neural networks, uh, like a uh, amateur trained one. Um, it will just go nuts because it doesn't recognize, uh, why is there blue in there? Everything I've trained is black and white. And so what you need to do is you need to fix it so that um, you, uh, what do you call it, inverse the colors, you make sure that's black and white, you do all of that and you pre-prepare it so that it fits what the computer recognizes. Um, the second one is it's all about fiddling. What machine learning really is doing is it's running data through, um, and I think this is where uh, we have a good explanation of it. You're training the model. It means that you have all of these features. So again, here was, uh, we'll use this as an example. You have length, depth, length, and mass. 
Um, you have these features and you want to figure out what type of flower it is, what species of flower, whether it's 0, 1, 2, or 3. Um, the idea is you randomly assign certain weights. Let's just say your length will account for 60% of the decision, whether it's high or low or whatever. Your mass is the other 40%. The other features don't matter. The computer basically makes a guess, goes and calculates what its result is, and then you back you you, lo you do a loss function and then you back propagate, meaning you compare and you go whoa, I'm way off, let's try something else, and you fiddle with those weights. And obviously I'm simplifying because a deep neural network will have many, many layers. The first layer will say uh, 0%, 5%, 10%, what's left, 85%. The next layer will do different percentages and um, that way you can account for different things because very rarely is it going to be, you know, 43 and higher is zero, 43 and below is one. There's going to be all of these subtleties. So each layer can do a slightly different uh, calculation or distinction so that maybe the first layer is above 43, below 43, the next one is above or below 24, the next one is, you know, uh, the difference between length and depth, like something entirely different. Um, and by doing multiple layers, you're doing a deep neural network. Um, convolutional networks, uh, it was described as really good for uh, multiple arrays. And the most common uh, multiple array is is an image. So let's just take a look at their really great uh, animations is the word I'm looking for. Um, basically, it is synthesizing data. It's summarizing five cells, nine cells together convoluting them, joining them together into a single number. And you can see this particular convolution will give you uh, an outline of the object, like that it, we call it edge detection, you just get the edges. Um, and then you can start uh, shrinking as well. And finally, transfer learning is really, really useful because um, if you're doing image recognition, let's say, uh, and you want to find the difference between a dog and a cat uh, versus if you want to find the difference between a pedestrian and a car, like those are both, uh, what do you call it, um, image recognition, computer vision problems. And the whole idea is you have this deep neural network that's let's say a hundred layers long or a thousand or a million or a billion layers uh, deep. The first million layers, let's say of, let's say the first 10% or 20, probably higher than that. Let's say the first 40, 50% of the layers is just about getting the image. So like look at the convolution, like getting the edges will help regardless of if you're trying to figure out if it's a car or a cat. Um, the layers that recognize colors, edges, to, to see the general shape, um, whether it's round or square, and all of those features are still very much relevant. And the idea behind transfer learning is you take a model from somewhere else, you take the, like you start with that and then you train the last couple layers and you add more layers to it. But the first chunk of layers is still very applicable. So you can take someone's computer vision uh, model for detecting cars and pedestrians and apply it to your cat and dog sorter because the first chunk of it is just about getting the computer to recognize general shapes, general colors, general images. And then the last layers are going to be like, oh, well, if it's fuzzy, if it has whiskers, if it has a nose or eyes or, you know, however you want to describe it. And so transfer learning is basically taking someone else's model and just starting with it. And so here they're using uh, the ResNet model um, three color channel images of 224 by 224 pixels. So they're starting with a 
um, pre-trained model and then continuing with that. All right, um, so I've been talking for quite a while. I'm just gonna answer the next questions and hopefully move on to uh, the next set. Uh, yes, so I am very curious about the studio, but I'm starting to wonder if this shows up at all. Uh, and, you know, I friendly admission, like I am just trying to speed my way through this. So uh, if you are doing these challenges and you're learning machine learning from start, uh, learning machine learning from start, you want to do this properly. So don't, don't uh, follow what I'm doing. This can't be a super interesting uh, video to watch, but um, you know, as as I'm powering through, I found you know finally what I wanted to see. Um, Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio has a designer, and so you can create a new pipeline, and. And you can start to visually do these things. And what's really, really important is they have all of the assets or really super common things you want to do to clean up your data, to run through your training, to uh, score it, to, to predict something out of it all in various options already. So here you saw that we took their automobile pricing data. We could select and clear out certain columns, uh, normalize data, and you can train entirely different uh, models. So mm, where are we? So you can add the, the various layers um, through a visual kind of interface and then you can train your model so uh, let's just go here oh uh, let's see so we want to normalize our data uh, and we want something in between what do we let's just go back to uh, one of these and take a look. So um, these pages are actually really, really helpful because um, once you have that, you know what it is you need. So uh, we'll go with the split data. And 
then it gets paired with two class logistic regression. Oh, this isn't actually the right one, but let's go back and find the regression model. Linear regression. And like that, you can train your model. And over here, um, you can have, you can change your settings, which columns you want. Um, I think over here, we can start putting uh, what type of parameters you want to do. And you can, like the art of machine learning is fiddling with, with these parameters. And it's annoying when it's embedded all in a lot of code to have it visually available. And what I thought was also really useful is after you run uh, one of your uh, machine learning things, you can just click, you can find your model. Um, let's say this one was really good. Um, and you can just deploy it. And right away, they give you an API in which you can throw in, you know, uh, this one is, was this the bike one? Yeah, the bike rental one. You can throw in your bike, your, uh, I don't know what else was in that data, and then it spits out your price. So that is so useful. You don't have to then, so I'm just thinking in the past, I would have had all this stuff on my computer to train it. And then afterwards, I'd set up Flask or Fast API or something to then deploy it on Azure. They're building it all in this studio and you just click the one deploy button and you have an API ready. Um, I don't think it's cheap. I don't think it's unreasonably expensive, but it's not cheap either. So you will be paying for convenience. But um, that, these charts are the whole reason why I'm doing this 20 hour um, challenge. And so I am really happy because I, I've seen enough. Um, I'll try and finish this, but the reason why I'm here was to see that designer page um, and to understand how it works. And, you know, they have samples for you already. So you can take a look at how, how to do it properly. And then maybe you can just sub out some of these, um, some of these uh, data sets with your own data set. So you don't have to go through and figure out what is available there. But it is so incredibly useful because this will make it so much easier because, um, I'm just looking at startups and obviously everyone wants to throw in AI or machine learning into their description because uh, it, it bumps up the value of their company. But now it really is like anyone can build one of these. It doesn't take all that much. And with the designer interface, it's, it's just really, really useful. Um, all of this about the SDK, like using it through code, like I understand where you're probably watching this video because you're a programmer and you're comfortable with code. And I think that's helpful, but it's like, I, I can see myself using the designer much more than writing code because of all this fiddling with numbers. It just makes more sense on an interface than in a big block of code where you got to figure out where did I put this number? Where did I put that number and so on? So um, yeah, I'm going to see how much more I can finish. Uh, and I'm also really glad I saw this bit on differential privacy. Like privacy is really important um, and it's a really interesting topic. So, uh, okay, that's kind of my quick update.
Woohoo! Uh, we have breezed through this challenge. Um, I skipped through so much of it because I, I couldn't care uh, so much about the code, but I was really interested in the theory. So um, if you are doing this, this exact same Ignite Data Scientist challenge, um, the ones I found really helpful were the starting, uh, these ones. No, sorry. Um, here, the regression model, classification model, clustering model, deep learning model. Uh, these ones will kind of give you a foundation of what machine learning is. And then I found these designer ones really helpful. And you'll see that a lot of these ideas were already captured if you paid attention to the designer. The options there, the, the parameters you can choose, the um, things you are doing on Machine Learning Studio were capturing all of what the code was doing. Um, other ones that were really interesting, I don't necessarily think it's you know, immediately useful, but things to pay attention for, uh, privacy, unfairness. Um, I, I see a lot of tech blogs talking about, say, how AI is, um, isn't as effective for uh, people of different ethnicity, for example, because they don't have the same kind of data sets to see, say, my face versus someone else's face. So uh, these ones were really interesting. I actually don't think they have a great solution for unfairness. Um, and then the monitoring is also kind of, so these ones are like gimmies at the end, where if you're familiar with uh, Azure in general, you know that you can monitor it. Uh, and, and they just kind of give you that quick trigger. So I'm glad I spent like the 30 seconds, one minute scrolling through it, but because uh, they, they trigger that bit of thought about, oh, should I be, uh, hoarding new data? Should I be monitoring how successful it is over time and setting up alerts? Um, you don't really need a whole lot of code and exercises to, to get it done. You just want to know that it exists. The other really useful one was tuning hyperparameters. Um, when I was learning uh, deep learning, dot AI, those courses, uh, so much emphasis was figuring out what was a good parameter. Um, here, try 0 0.05, then try 0 0.2, then maybe somewhere in between, blah, blah, blah. But Azure is just going to choose it for you. They're just going to keep running trials because they obviously have a thousand computers, a million computers in the cloud, and they'll just keep running all of the trials rather than like me trying, knowing that I have one computer going with my gut feeling and then kind of pushing and nudging it left and right a little bit. So um, this was really interesting as well. So um, overall, you know, if you are brand new to data science, I don't, I don't know if I would recommend this. They cover so many topics so very briefly, but if you've done courses like Deep Learning or Coursera, where you've kind of jumped in depth and you want to know what Azure can do, this was excellent. Like this is exactly what I needed. I wanted to know how I can bring machine learning into Azure, take advantage of what Microsoft uh, can do. And yeah, so this was really fantastic. Uh, I don't know how exciting that was for you. I just flipped through a lot of pages. You're probably going to see it sped up so fast you can't read it anyways. Um, but hopefully that was kind of helpful, kind of interesting, maybe not. Um, but I'll, I'll post it up anyway. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you didn't enjoy this video, which I suspect some of you might, uh, do leave me a comment. Tell me don't do this again. Uh, I probably won't anyways, but just let me know um, and I will shift to other content. Thanks.